Greetings everyone. Thank you for joining today's webinar on ProVision ISRs OSIO VMS. I'm Ari Trigger coming to you from the pre-sales team at ProVision ISR. Over the next 45 minutes, we'll look at some of OSIO's software features and examine the enterprise hardware that complements our video management system. Regardless of your level of expertise in the field, our goal is to provide you with insights into the capabilities of OSIO VMS. So without further ado, let's delve into the functionalities and features that make ProVision ISR a noticeable player in the surveillance industry. We offer two types of VMS. The standard license free is a standalone version that supports up to 256 cameras and is compatible with both PC and Mac. Catering to single users who don't need a centralized system it is commonly utilized by individuals who prefer viewing cameras on their PC or Mac, avoiding the need to log into the web interface or relying on HDMI extenders. A second VMS option is the enterprise version, operating on a server client system. The benefits of this client server architecture include enhanced scalability, centralized management, improved security, and resource sharing capabilities. The enterprise version is license-based, supporting up to 10,000 cameras. We provide enterprise software compatible with both PCs and Macs. Enterprise versions find their niche in larger installations such as control rooms, hospital groups, and retail store chains where a centralized system is essential. Furthermore, stay tuned for the next slide where I'll walk you through our comprehensive range of enterprise hardware. Presenting our comprehensive array of enterprise hardware, it's important to emphasize ProVision ISR's versatility in providing solutions for projects of any size, from a simple four-camera configuration to an extensive control room setup. Let's kick off with our management servers. Purpose-built to tackle the most demanding tasks, available in three sizes, small, medium, and large, each crafted for different installation requirements. Notably, all our servers operate on Linux, guaranteeing that the PC resources are dedicated solely to running the CCTV software. Stay tuned as we explore typical setups in the upcoming slides. All our management servers can act as both server and client. However, we always recommend using our small management server to act as a dedicated client. Next, we have our storage server that is compatible with our large server. ProVision ISR storage server was planned, designed, and built to store massive amounts of data and keep it as safe and redundant as possible. Next in our lineup is the video decoder. It stands out for its durability, capable of displaying up to 144 channels across four separate screens. It effectively takes the most resource demanding task from the client, allowing them to focus on CCTV responsibilities like managing events, playback, alarms, and more. Pairing with our keyboard and joystick for a seamless experience, we will deep dive into the decoder later on in the presentation. Finally, let's delve into our transfer server. This crucial component plays a pivotal role in expanding the system's bandwidths, significantly increasing camera capacity. Dedicated to video routing, it efficiently liberates the management server to concentrate on critical tasks. Now let's explore some typical enterprise architectures, beginning with a small server installation where the server also functions as the client. This setup allows connections to multiple sites via LAN or internet, operating within a fixed license fee that includes 256 license channels and can support 64 devices with no expansion options. Notably, there's no recording module, and the client can display up to 32 channels in real time. Moving on, we have a similar setup to the previous one, utilizing the small server purely as a server. However, in this configuration, you can connect up to four clients, with each client capable of displaying up to 32 channels in real time. Now turning our attention to the medium server, Similar to the small server, it operates with a fixed, non-expandable license. However, the key distinction lies in the fact that the medium server boasts 512 license channels, 
and can support 300 devices. Additionally, it comes equipped with two SATA slots for inserting hard drives dedicated to recording. The number of clients also increases to 64, displaying 32 channels each, but it's crucial to note that bandwidth considerations become paramount. Now shifting our focus to the large server, it operates with a flexible license, meaning it comes standard with 512 channels and can support 1,024 devices. The flexibility in licensing allows for the addition of extra channels when the need arises. The number of clients increases significantly to 256, displaying 32 channels each, but it's important to emphasize that bandwidth considerations once again become crucial. To address these demands, additional hardware like transfer servers will be necessary. Now let's delve into an example of a typical control room environment where all our enterprise hardware works in unison. In this setup, our devices including IP cameras and MVR establish connections with the servers through LAN or internet. Controllers utilize our client software to operate the system and respond to events. The storage server is dedicated to saving all footage, while the decoder serves as a video wall operated seamlessly by our keyboard and joystick. Provision ISR's VMS Graphic User Interface or GUI stands out for its user-friendly design accommodating both beginners and experienced users with intuitive navigation. The GUI's intuitive layout ensures quick access to essential features, coupled with the flexibility of customization, allowing users to tailor the dashboard and settings according to their specific needs. Real-time monitoring and advanced analytics provide users with immediate insights from live feeds. Scalability is a key feature, accommodating systems of all sizes, from small setups to large enterprises. Robust security features ensure data protection, and integration capabilities with third-party systems enhance versatility. Regular updates keep the GUI aligned with evolving technology and security standards. Alongside these features, we offer comprehensive support and training resources, making Provision ISR's VMS a powerful and adaptable solution. Let's start with an overview of our GUI modules. Due to the extensive range, we won't cover each one in detail during this presentation. While I'll explore specific modules more deeply, I'll provide brief overviews for the others. This approach ensures you get a glimpse of our diverse functionalities our GUI encompasses. In the realm of group management, we possess the capability to manage databases containing vehicle and people information. Within accounts and permission sections, users can establish user groups, define user permissions, and monitor the current online statuses. LPR monitoring offers valuable real-time information on vehicles. You can search for incidents and even pull traffic flow reports. The analytics feature empowers users to search for various events, including searching by face, search for faces, or license plates, as well as searching by objects such as humans, vehicles, and motorcycles. Face greetings can be employed in various settings such as retail stores, hotels, and office entrances. The system can recognize individuals and greet them by name or with a customized message, enhancing the customer or employee experience. Temperature monitoring, like LPR monitoring, provides valuable real-time information on temperature monitored points in conjunction with our thermal cameras. Local configuration is where you can find most of the system settings. Use this to tailor your VMS specifically to your needs. Now let's explore the Live View page and some of its functionalities. You have the flexibility to drag and drop cameras or NVRs from any video point regardless of their site location. You can either choose your preferred layout from our standard options or customize layouts for convenient access.
you have the ability to manually trigger alarm outputs from any site or device. If you want to view an overlay of your analytic detection areas and target tracking boxes, simply enable them on the live view. You can also switch between stream types, but it's recommended to use self-adaptive as the system will automatically adjust to the best resolution based on the bandwidth availability. Similar to our NVRs, you can observe real-time analytic events as they happen by enabling Smart Snapshot View. From within Smart Snapshot, you can instantly play back the event or with human face detection, add it to the database. You can also customize what you want to see by configuring your preferences. Taking it a step further, you can access live face and license plate recognition results as well. By hovering your mouse over any live channel, you'll find various options like manually record, take snapshots, digitally zoom, enable mic and speaker, and quick access to device settings. Within device settings, you have comprehensive access mirroring the settings you would find logging into the camera, covering from OSD and image settings to our analytic rule setup. Moving on to playback, you have the capability to playback footage from any source, allowing simultaneous playback of up to 16 channels. Simply select the cameras from any video point, then fine tune your search by customizing date ranges and event types. Once you've chosen your search criteria, click play to initiate playback. Currently, we are viewing cameras from three different sites playing unsynchronized. If you adjust the timeline of any camera, the timeline will only adjust the camera you have selected. You also have the option to synchronize playback across multiple channels by selecting synchronize playback. Choose the desired cameras, and when you adjust the timeline, all cameras sync together. Within playback, easily backup and download footage by selecting your beginning and end points and then choosing backup. Guys, what I've covered here is just the beginning. Live view and playback offer a number of features, but unfortunately, time is not on our side to explore them all. Understanding the methods of connecting devices like NVRs and IP cameras to the VMS is crucial. And here are some versatile approaches for different applications. Firstly, the IP address method involves assigning a static IP address to each device, with our compatibility extending to Hikvision, Dahua, and Onviv protocols. However, potential roadblocks include time-consuming setups, network complexities, challenges in device relocations, and when connecting to remote devices not on the local LAN, the cost of static public IP addresses. Secondly, Cloud Server employs a cloud-based server or service for remote connections. Yet, this method is reliant on server uptime and may face latency and lag issues. The third approach is DDNS, or Dynamic Domain Name System, where DDNS services associate a domain name with a dynamic IP address. Challenges include router configuration, network complexities, dependency on server uptime, and potential latency. Next is RTSP, or Real-Time Streaming Protocol, facilitating audio and video streaming between devices. Potential problems encompass complex configuration, port forwarding, and concerns related to firewall security. Lastly, 
auto report involves configuring devices to automatically report their status or data to a central system. Its advantages include requiring only one static IP at the server, along with pre-configuration time-saving methods aiding faster installations. AutoReport has been meticulously designed and and developed by Provision ISR engineers to seamlessly integrate within the Provision ISR ecosystem. Let's delve deeper into AutoReport, considering its significance as a key feature in our offering. With AutoReport, your setup might involve the management server searching for either static IPs or DDNS servers. While this approach is reliable, the investment in time and money is not efficient. Consider a simple calculation. If you have 200 devices to set up, and the average time to configure a device is 3 minutes, that's over 10 hours spent solely on configuration. With AutoReport, All we require is one static IP for the server. Devices such as IP cameras and NVRs get pre-configured by providing the server static IP address and port number, then assigning a unique device ID. As the device establishes internet connectivity, it automatically connects to the VMS server. Essentially, the devices actively search for the management server. Even if the device's IP address changes or gets relocated, the device continues seeking the static IP address of the VMS server, never breaking the connection. Practically, let's walk through how AutoReport works. On the device side, using an IP camera for this example, navigate to network settings, then AutoReport. Here, provide the server IP address, port number, and assign the device a unique ID. That's it on the device side. Moving to the VMS, within Resource Management, specifically in the Add, Edit, or Delete Device menu, click on Add and move to Unbound Auto-Report Devices. This is a list of auto-report enabled devices that have come online but have not been added to the VMS. Click on the device or devices you want to add, then select the transfer and storage server, and finally, the area where you require the device to be located within the VMS. Let's choose Safe City. The device comes online within a few seconds and is added to the Safe City area automatically. Let's take it a step further by binding multiple devices to automatically connect to the VMS without intervention when they come online. Following similar methods I just showed you, but now select AutoReport. Provide a device ID range. For this example, we want to automatically add devices with the range 255 to 260. Select your servers and area. For this example, we will choose Safe City again, and that's it. When devices with the ID range 255 to 260 come online, they will automatically appear in the Safe City area without further intervention. Indeed, utilizing AutoReport proved to be an intelligent approach for seamlessly adding and managing devices on our VMS. Let's discuss e-mapping, a tool that enhances operational efficiency and security by providing a visual representation of monitored areas. The system enables real-time monitoring of various devices, streamlining responses to incidents and expediting resource dispatch. EMAPs ensure situational awareness, offering decision makers a comprehensive view for informed choices. User-friendly interfaces and customization are crucial, especially in high-stress situations, allowing adaptations to facility needs. Across industries, EMAP improves invaluable, boosting efficiency and improving emergency responses by providing real-time clarity. Post-event EMAP tracking is indispensable, enabling thorough analysis and optimization of incidents involving humans or vehicles. Let's experience EMAP live monitoring and tracking in action. In live monitoring, our compatibility with Google Maps ensures intuitive and realistic map management. You can create a parent map with multiple sites and upload site plans to accurately position cameras in their physical locations. 
When a camera detects an event, the system alerts us with a flash. Clicking on the camera opens the live view on our right panel. Alternatively, you can enable Switch to Alarm View eMap, and when the event occurs, the eMap automatically switches to the event location. You can also enable Auto Alarm View to display the live feed from the camera that detected the event. Clicking to close the channel stops the live view and brings up the next event in the queue. Lastly, you can filter the alarm type, customizing the system to meet your specific needs. Let's move on to tracking. To initiate tracking, navigate to our analytics search and select search by face. Choose your video point and then click the plus button to access the menu for selecting an image. It's worth noting that we can choose images from our local PC or existing databases or within our snapshot gallery. The snapshot gallery contains snapshots of face detection enabled cameras allowing us to search for faces not necessarily within our database. Let's select a random image. Then define our search criteria, including date in time range, the number of results to display, and the similarity percentage match. Click on eMap Track View to bring up our eMap, displaying the person's movement with a virtual line as they move from camera to camera. Clicking Track Playback initiates chronological playback of all events. Observe the snap time details and similarity match percentage results. EMAP tracking proves to be an indispensable tool post-event not only for human tracking, but also vehicle tracking based on license plate recognition results. Its versatility in analyzing and optimizing incidents involving both humans and vehicles makes it a valuable asset in comprehensive event assessments. Object counting automatically tallies the number of objects passing through a specific area or line, objects being human, four or two wheel vehicles. Allow me to provide a practical example of its usefulness. Many shop owners or retail stores deploy this technology to count the number of people entering their store. With this data, they can determine peak hours during the day or week and adjust their workforce accordingly. When paired with our VMS, we can achieve occupancy control, crucial for establishments with limitations on the number of people allowed at any given time. We can count entrances and exits, offering a live update on the number of people inside a building, setting thresholds, and triggering notifications or reactions. Beneficial for parking management as well, vehicle counts for entrances and exits can also be monitored. On the VMS, we can generate real-time and historical reports with the use of object counting. To do this, navigate to People Counting and select your video point. Clicking Apply will display real-time statistics on traffic flow. By default, it automatically compares to yesterday, but you can choose other time periods for this comparison. Let's select Compare to Last Week. Here you can see the search date, the object type, and the cameras providing the data. The total incoming traffic for the day is displayed along with a comparison to last week, showing a 6.63% increase in the traffic flow from the same period. Ownership informs us of how many objects are currently inside the facility, while we can view the other objects such as vehicles, motorcycles, or bicycles. 
You can export the data to Excel for further analysis. Scroll down on the page to view different types of graphs, providing a visual insight into the statistics. Let's delve into occupancy control. To initiate a new task, click on the plus sign. Next, select the cameras needed for object counting. Provide the task with a name and set the maximum threshold. In this example, I'll opt for 20, thus triggering a notification if the count surpasses this limit. Specify the object type, in this case humans, and set the schedule. As you can see, multiple tasks can run concurrently, even across different sites. Now let's observe the task we just created. As people move in and out of various locations, the system dynamically tallies the real-time count of humans, maintaining the current occupancy. If the current occupancy surpasses the set threshold of 20, the controller receives an immediate notification, takes appropriate action. Now, let's delve into our TV wall. Our VMS servers boast the capability to support up to 16 decoders. Each decoder is equipped with four HDMI outputs, allowing content to be displayed on up to four monitors. With each output accommodating up to 32 channels, a single decoder has a remarkable capacity of 144 channels. Crunching the numbers, reveals the potential to access a little over 2,300 channels, providing you with extensive viewing options. It's crucial to note that you have the flexibility to customize each output with multiple layout options. As an example, consider customized layouts on the page. Monitor 1 can showcase a single camera, while Monitor 2 accommodates four cameras, and Monitor 3 displays 10 cameras, and monitor 4 hosts 22 cameras. This level of customization ensures that you can tailor the display according to your specific needs and preferences. Stay tuned for an upcoming video where I'll demonstrate the TV wall functionality and showcase the personalized layouts. Taking it a step further, the TV wall proves exceptionally versatile by featuring picture-in-picture, -picture, alarm views of events triggered by analytics, supporting playback, and enabling seamless connectivity with third-party HDMI devices. The transformative power of the TV wall is amplified when paired with our joystick controller, turning it into an indispensable monitoring tool. Now. Let's dive into the process and see how it's done. Let's kick things off by guiding you through the process of setting up layouts. It's worth noting that the procedure is both simple and speedy. I've overlaid the real TV wall to provide you with a more immersive understanding of how the TV wall comes to life. You have the capability to merge all four outputs into one. This will enlarge one camera across all four monitors. <laughs> now let's explore the creation of different layouts where each output is dedicated to display a single camera. Keep in mind you have the flexibility to add cameras from various video sources on the VMS not necessarily limited to the same site or NVR. Watch as I drag and drop random cameras onto the TV wall, observing how the feeds seamlessly come online. <laughs> the versatility continues as we explore the creation of yet another layout featuring multiple configurations. Whether it's dedicating each output to a specific camera distributing cameras randomly, or implementing various layouts, the possibilities are diverse and customizable to suit your preferences and monitoring needs. Let's witness the flexibility in action. 
Yo te dije, yo todo bien. Pero me da un Bueno, quiero un Additionally, you have the convenience of easily switching between saved layouts. Let's take it a step further and create an alarm window on the TV wall. An alarm window is designed to display events as they occur. For this example, I'll create a picture in picture, but it's important to note that any channel can serve as an alarm window. This means you can have multiple alarm windows, which is particularly useful for black screen monitoring. The process is straightforward. Just navigate to the alarm linkage page and choose the events to add to the alarm window on the TV wall. Once complete, there is no further action required. Simply wait for an event to happen and it will automatically appear on your TV wall. Similar to alarm windows, we can also create playback windows. Click on preview by the video point to enable playback. This action converts a channel on the TV wall into a playback window. Drag a camera onto the channel and use the timeline to search for specific events. Switching to other cameras for playback is simple. Just drag and drop them onto the playback window. It's important to note that when paired with our joystick, you can set up quick action buttons to switch between pre-saved views and layouts. Control PTZ cameras and enable quick playback on the TV wall. In our system, we offer various response mechanisms to address different events, and it's crucial to highlight the importance of the alarm linkage, especially in our CCTV monitoring through VMS. The primary objective is to ensure that responses are tailored to the relevant events only. Properly configuring alarm linkage is essential for the overall effectiveness of your system and its responsiveness. These response mechanisms include an audio message which triggers a sound alert on the client side, PTZ presets activate predefined camera positions on our PTZ cameras, while record captures event footage and saves it for review and backup, alarm outputs can activate external devices like lights and sirens creating a visible and audio response. Alarm view displays real-time video feeds of the event on the alarm window on the client VMS, providing immediate visual information. Snapshot captures a still image of the event, offering a snapshot for analysis. Voice broadcast plays a preloaded audio message, adding an auditory component to the response. TV wall alarm window opens an alarm window on the video wall, ensuring that the event is prominently displayed. Email notification sends detailed event information and video links via email, facilitating remote awareness. Additionally, we have incorporated an automated SOP or standard operating procedure feature that enhances the responsiveness of our system by furnishing controllers with predefined protocols tailored to specific events and sites. The significance of SOPs in optimizing responses to events is paramount and acknowledging their importance we have dedicated a specific section to elaborate on their role and functionality in the ensuing discussion. Each of these response mechanisms plays a vital role in enhancing the efficiency and precision of your system's response to events. It's crucial to highlight that our VMS allows reaction beyond the camera directly involved in the event. Triggered by an event on one camera, we can initiate multiple reactions across various devices within our VMS. For example, 
If a device on site 8 within system 3 generates an event, we can instruct devices from the same or multiple sites to trigger as well. The significance of SOPs cannot be overstated. The consistent positive feedback from our clients serves as evidence of the crucial role and reliability of SOPs in high-stress environments such as control rooms. Implementing SOPs for VMS offers numerous advantages. SOPs ensure consistency in responses, streamline operations for increased efficiency, and simplify staff training with clear procedures. They enhance security by minimizing human errors during critical situations. Additionally, SOPs provide a valuable record for post-incident analysis and enable ongoing optimization of security processes. In reality, let's explore how this process works starting with the creation of SOPs. Navigate to the Alarm Center module where you'll find SOP settings. On the left-hand side, you'll see a list of existing SOPs. For this example, I'm going to create a new SOP for the Peacock Office, and I'm going to name it Peacock Office Burglar Event. Once the SOP is created, we then define specific actions we want our controller to follow. These action points can be tailored to your specific needs. After creating actions, we need to link the SOP to the site by going to Alarm Linkage. For this example, I'm going to link pre-configured line crossing and sterile area analytic events. Navigate to the Peacock site on the left panel. Once selected, choose the alarm type. First, let's choose line crossing. Now scroll to the SOP column, and we add the SOP we just created, and we're going to add them to all channels on the site. Let's repeat the process for sterile area. Let's observe how a controller manages events linked to SOPs. Before beginning, it's crucial to highlight that without SOP filtering, the number of events can be overwhelming. Over 300 events and rising. There's a lot of noise to deal with. By clicking on the SOP filter, it will only display events you want your controller to respond to. The event queue instantly drops to 13 events. Let's handle a random sterile area event by clicking the play button to review it. The controller then navigates to alarm processing to manage the event. Selecting action items from the predefined list we just created. If it's a false alarm, the controller confirms and saves the progress, stamping the SOP with the user credentials. You can choose a disposition false alarm and then provide remarks such as Mary and Jack were working late. The alarm is now processed and cannot be edited. Let's select another random event. The controller can watch the events and determine the disposition. This time, a true event. The controller writes remarks, perhaps describing the suspect's attributes. and follows the predefined action items, each timestamped after selection. The timestamp and the inability to edit the SOP post-processing provide an accurate reflection of the event and the controller's response, post-event review. Efficiency is invaluable. We offer the facilitation of event backup on a remote NVR directly from the client VMS software no need to go to site, further enhancing commitments to post-sale service excellence. During playback, opt for backup on device to backup directly to a USB inserted into a remote NVR. It's as straightforward as that. Moving on to our last topic, majority of features I've just demonstrated and many more can be showcased in a single elegant dashboard interface. Let's get straight 
Let's begin by creating a dashboard from scratch. Make your way to the dashboard module and click Data Dashboard. Then click Create. We have several modules to build your dashboard. Let's randomly select modules. Notice that within some modules, you can further filter to tailor the dashboard to your requirements. One of my favorite modules is the EMAP as it is an effective dashboard module and looks as aesthetically pleasing as well. Let's choose the attendance data and the last one, calendar. Click OK and the dashboard comes to life. In the center, we have our beautiful EMAP with the same functionality I demonstrated earlier in the webinar. You can select to view cameras live on the right hand column. Navigate through your different maps. Even filter alarm types directly from the dashboard. On the right hand side, we have our smart snapshot events, populating live as the events happen. You can scroll through the events and play back any event of your choice. You can even add a face to the database directly from the dashboard. On the bottom left, we have parking space management, providing the controller with real-time stats on available parking spaces within parking lots. And in the bottom center, our attendance data line graph provides a real-time stat on employee register, offering details such as number of people arriving late or early, or how many are working overtime or taken off. Lastly, we can make the dashboard into full screen. That wraps up my presentation. I hope you found it interesting and gained valuable insights into the world of Asaya VMS. If you have any further inquiries or want to deep dive into something specific within our VMS, please do not hesitate to contact us. Alternatively, if you would like presentations on our analytics, solutions, or CAM2 application, please don't hesitate to reach out as well.